In terms of digital connectivity, obviously developed markets lead this. Uh, they were the first to come online with computers uh, coming into the homes in the 1990s. Uh, emerging markets came online through the mobile phone. The cheaper uh, device, cheaper uh, network, all helped, that, all helped to make that happen. Latin America still lags behind other regions when it comes to digital connectivity, specifically with fixed broadband in the home. So these three figures here provide some context for where, digital cons or where Latin America stands in the global context. Uh, so 57% of Latin American digital consumers have access to the internet. And a lot of that, as I said, comes from the mobile phone. So of those with mobile subscriptions in Latin America, 70% are doing so or have that access through that mobile device. Much of this is tied to the 3G network uh, thus far in this region. Uh, so 95% of the population has access to at least 3G. The strength of Latin America's uh, digital connectivity comes through in our digital consumer index, is what we call it. We launched this last October. This is a project that we'll do on an annual basis. And, and what it does is uh, we're synthesizing 2,500 data points from across our syndicated offering, looking at 50 different countries worldwide. Um, as a whole, we look at both digital connectivity and digital commerce spend. Uh, this particular chart just looks at digital connectivity. So specifically, home connectivity versus mobile connectivity. Uh, the higher the number, the better off the market is. So you can see we plotted all 50 countries across this. Um, you can see in orange are the Latin America countries. There are seven contained within our index. And you can see all of these rank in the bottom half of the overall index. Uh, Peru is the laggard in this situation. The two factors that hold back digital connectivity the most in this region would be income inequality and the high price, uh, pr high price services. So one of the best figures for understanding income inequality is the Gini index. And essentially what we found is that there's a high correlation. Uh, markets that tend to be more equally distributed in income tend to have greater access to internet, um, as you can see in the left chart here. The second chart looks at the ICT price basket, which comes from the International Telecommunications Union. And what they're looking at is the cost of services for both fixed and mobile. Um, and as uh, Anthony spoke about yesterday in his presentation, um, in Brazil, consumers had a hard time affording the services of mobile texting, for example. So when WhatsApp came on the scene, consumers went there. And you can see that in the rankings here, that Latin Americans, um, as compared to for the, the US, for example, how much more um, expensive services would be here. Um, only African nations rank behind Latin American ones. And this is all important because that weak digital connectivity hinders digital commerce uptake here. Uh, so if you want consumers to be able to buy online, they need to be able to get online and have uh, consistent access. Uh, so this chart looks at our, our digital consumer index overall. So we're charting digital connectivity against connected commerce. Um, so you can, again, see we charted the 50 countries in our index. The seven uh, with Latin America are shown in orange, and you can see that they rank in the bottom half. With countries like Brazil, Argentina, and Chile performing the best in the region, um, and Peru, again, uh, lagging behind. In this next section, we're going to identify the Latin American digital consumer here. So what we did was some uh, segmentation analysis. So we started with our Global Consumer Trends Survey. This is an annual survey that we do globally across 20 different countries. Um, and we, we took those results, and then we decided to segment the market. And what we're trying to get to here is your most savvy digital consumers. So we set it up based on two different metrics. Number one would be how consumers are using that mobile phone. So we looked at these activities here. We zeroed in on the ones that are more commerce-driven. And we said, we want to see consumers, in order to be in this segment, they need to have done four out of these seven commerce activities. And then the second segment that we looked at 
was how they, or whether or not they bought a product or service category online. So online could be via any device. We, we counted both computer or mobile phone. So based on uh, this segmentation, they had to hit both of those metrics to be included. So when you think about that full global population um, or the, the full results from that global survey, when we narrow it down and cut out those two things, we end up with 21% in uh, Brazil were still included, 14% in Mexico, and then the 12% in Colombia. So moving forward, as I talk about uh, our, our survey results, it's always with this in mind. It's your most savvy of digital consumers. So who are these digital consumers? These next few slides are going to talk a bit about the demographics behind them. So what we see with these digital consumers in Latin America versus digital consumers outside of Latin America is that the wealth and the youth are more highly concentrated. Uh, so I pull, pulled out two figures here. So if we think about the age, 57% of these regional digital consumers fall between the ages of 24 to 34 years of age. If you take that same 10-year cohort and compare it to uh, consumers, digital consumers outside the region, they make up 43% of, of the overall group um, outside the region. The other insight is in terms of the income. Uh, so the average income of a Latin American digital consumer based on the segmentation is this 42,000 US dollars. Again, this is, this is nominal income, there's no purchase parity involved, and these are the most savvy of digital consumers. So these are your, your higher income individuals here. Uh, so these consumers, they make $42,000 annually, which is about $14,000 more than their non-digital consumer counterpart. And the thing that I would point out is when you take those two figures, that is the greatest disparity. Um, we saw the greatest disparity here in Latin America as compared with any region around the world. This, these two charts just provide a, another way of looking at that age and income question, so you could understand how this splits um, across various uh, ranges. So in general, Latin American digital consumers, their average age is 32.9. That makes them um, a bit younger than some of the developed markets, uh, but they're still not the youngest. The Middle East and Africa and Eastern Europe uh, digital consumers are actually younger. And then in terms of income, we see them fall where they're uh, making a bit more money than some of the emerging markets, but obviously they don't have the purse of the developed market consumers. These next few slides talk about um, attitudes towards the internet. So it, engaging with consumers in this connected commerce world starts with how they, how they connect, how they engage, what they expect from that experience. So a common sentiment that we see worldwide is the idea of being lost without the internet. Yes, folks, we are there. I came back on a flight from Europe uh, about a month ago. My husband made fun of me because I couldn't get on Wi-Fi. I was, I was going mad. But I, I survived that 10-hour flight, and, and, and I got my internet again. So, so we see that also, that sentiment here in Latin America. Uh, so Latin American consumers are as lost or almost as lost. About 60% of them say they are versus 65% outside the region. If you zero in and look at Brazil, they're really the regional standout. So 72% of Brazilian digital consumers say they are lost without the internet. Now, that connection to the internet, it comes with new services and all these great benefits, but it also brings stress into your lives. And not only are these Brazilians the most connected, they're also the most stressed across the region. Another question that we asked in terms of uh, attitudes towards the internet is this idea of being willing to freely share information online. So digital consumers in Latin America are nearly as open to sharing information online. What I would point out with these results are the Colombians that stand out for their lack of willingness to share. So we see about, I, I believe it's 34%, uh, 35% of Colombians say they'd be willing to share online. That's about 10 percentage points lower than the uh, overall region. 
And this makes sense because what, we, what we've seen in Colombia of late is that they were enacting uh, more legislation to put safeguards in place around privacy. Another attitude towards the internet that's important for those um, out in the audience today is whether or not consumers are open to targeted ads um, sent to them. So targeted ads, as defined in the question to them, was about uh, are, are you concerned with companies taking your online purchase behavior, your past purchase behavior, um, and, and essentially some tracking information to then provide targeted ads. And good news for those marketers out there, Latin Americans are more open to this uh, tracking and, and providing targeted ads. Uh, so you can see the, the question is worded as, do you view it as an invasion of privacy? So the lower the agreement, the better off you are. You can see that all the Latin American countries come in at the bottom. The next few slides look at how consumers uh, use these devices, uh, both in commerce situations and then also outside of that. So in general, uh, consumers are using their computer and also their mobile device, which we'll talk about in a second, more so for communication activities rather than commerce activities. So you can see first and foremost, they go online to browse or search the internet. The second most popular activity on that computer is sending or receiving email. You do see visiting or updating a social network um, come in third. That is higher than in other regions we see. 80% uh, of digital consumers here report having done so on a daily basis. So that certainly speaks to how social media is intertwined with this culture and how it's a vital channel for reaching these consumers. This slide uh, zeroes in more on that mobile experience. So how are consumers using that device on the go to connect? Again, uh, searching the internet for information comes in number one, but look at what comes in second and third. It's using the messaging app or updating information on a social network. So that's interesting. That idea of sending and receiving emails falls to four when you go to the mobile device. Um, so that's particularly important. Obviously, mobile devices are important to consumers here because that tends to be how they connect to the internet. And you can see that uh, using this messaging app or social network is of more importance to them on this device. So this is obviously a, a key channel to reach them. This slide takes those, uh, it, it's the same information as the previous slides, but it zeroes in on just commerce-driven activities so we can understand how they use these various devices for commerce. So just a few learnings here. Uh, using a banking service is obviously very high. We do see that around the globe as well. Um, the idea of being able to go to your bank and just check information or maybe make a remote deposit is kind of often that first step towards using your phone for more of a, of a purchase, let's say. You can see that it's very popular for reading reviews as well. Um, and, and also what happens is consumers may use that computer. The number one reason is they visit a price comparison site. But you see that idea when you're on the go on your mobile device and going in store and wanting to check prices in store, that falls to number three on the mobile side. This third section, we're going to talk about, again, some of the segmentation analysis from these most savvy digital consumers and how they use this technology um, and how they browse and buy. So smartphones, as we've established, are particularly important for digital consumers across Latin America as it was the gateway to the internet. So put, to put that in perspective, I've, I've pulled a couple big figures from some of those previous charts. So if we look at how a digital consumer here uses a mobile device, and this is on a daily basis, 88% say they browse or, uh, or browse or search the internet on a daily basis. In contrast, 35% say they actually uh, buy an item or a service. Uh, so you can see, again, there is a wide disparity between using it for more commerce activities versus communication activities, um, which is important to keep in mind. This here looks at the, uh, the role of marketing influencers in these digital consumers' lives. So in general, when we think about Latin America, 
these consumers are more influenced by marketing channels than anyone else. You can see that in the chart here. The orange line is often longer than the, the blue line all across here. The other insight here is what is most important. So it's about loyalty reward programs and also recommendations from family and friends. Now the voice of the consumer or the voice of a, a trusted friend or relative and the advice they may have is certainly a top motivation for consumers around the world. So that's really no different from what we see elsewhere. But the idea of loyalty rewards and programs, that's a motivation that does rise to the top for uh, digital consumers here. And that does speak to this population. Latin Americans are known to be more loyal to brands, and we see that come through. The other thing I'll point out is uh, where Latin Americans are not as influenced as the global population with a specific channel. And that would be the, the texting at the bottom, the second to the bottom, and celebrity endorsements. So again, consumers don't text here in Brazil as they might in the US, so therefore that as a marketing channel is not as viable. And then celebrity endorsements also um, are, are the least uh, likely to influence consumers. So Kanye does not have a future here, we don't think. In terms of why consumers go online, they go online to save time and money. And this varies a bit across regions, but it does kind of keep that, that full global story. That's what they're there for. If you look at the top five, look at it in Latin America, I can tell you that globally speaking, it's, it's a very similar type of ranking. The, the big difference is that this idea of being able to order anytime, anywhere is more highly rated outside of this market. Um, so we probably truly haven't hit that convenience factor here as we have in, in uh, more developed markets maybe, like a Western Europe. What comes in instead of, of that one is the easy site navigation. So that's ranked of a particular importance in Latin America. In fact, if you were to look at the full global figures, that actually moved up, that made uh, uh, several jumps up the rankings in order to get that high uh, for Latin Americans. And we'll tease this out a bit more. So in terms of importance of easy site navigation, you can see that 40% of Latin Americans say this is of importance. Uh, this is what drives them to shop online. In contrast, that figure stands at 30% globally speaking. The chart on the right breaks it down by actual country. So you can see Brazil is the number one market. Um, so we do this survey across 20 different countries. Brazil is number one, Colombia is number three. And what we find with our research, um, our analysts who are on the ground conducting this research across the region, is that, for example, in Brazil, consumers go to their computer to browse and buy. They may use also their mobile device while they're on the go to do it. But the fact that there's a non-responsive website, more often than not, they often, and they also may not trust their mobile device, they wait until they're at home or work to execute the final purchase on the computer. So this uh, chart here looks at purchase channels for consumers. So why do they buy on a, or what, what product, what category do they buy on a computer versus a smartphone? Why do they go in store? What do they not purchase at all? So in general, what we see is the reason that consumers go in store is because they want to see or try on something. As a result, it tends to be apparel and beauty and personal care products that really drive um, that experience. When we talk about why do consumers go online, either between either device, computer or smartphone, it tends to be driven by things like online downloads and travel purchases. Obviously, something like online downloads is a purchase category that came into existence because of this digital economy, so that does make sense. And then we can also think about where, how consumers use the computer versus the mobile device. What products do they buy on one and not the other? Where's the disparity here? So you can see some of the greatest disparity is with your higher value ticketed items. So appliances, electronics, they tend to prefer the computer over the mobile phone. 
Where is it the narrowest? That's with food service delivery and takeaway. So that clearly indicates that consumers do not see a great difference in that experience provided by those two devices. And also, food service delivery takeaway is a lower value purchase item. So obviously, consumers are probably not as concerned if something goes wrong on their mobile device. This here looks at the frequency of these purchase categories、um, and what these savvy digital consumers are buying. So, in general, the most popular categories they're buying online are going to be the downloadable,、um, downloadable media,、uh, consumer electronics, and apparel. When we slice it down, and we, if we want to look at daily or weekly frequency, in this situation, I'm going to talk about weekly frequency. Downloaded media takes the cake on that front. This is what they do the most often. In, in our research here, that looks across Brazil, Mexico, and Colombia, it was actually Mexico that drove this. So, 40% of those savvy digital consumers said they made that purchase on a weekly basis. Now, alongside this, we also do primary research that sizes how much consumers spend across these different product categories, and the fact that they buy most frequently helps those figures as well. So, in Mexico, we see the number one、uh, category spent online、um, from a、uh, product-driven、uh, mindset is consumer electronics. And then the second most popular is this downloaded media, which refers to downloaded music, film, and the like. So think about those two together. What does that mean? It means that's your tech-savvy consumers. Those are your consumers that are going online, that are more comfortable with making those purchases, and they also like to have these personal devices. So they're going to they're going to buy these devices online, and also buy the items that go on these devices. And I also wanted to point out beauty is an interesting category. So this is that same chart from before, but we just zeroed in on beauty, and we're looking at it across the region. So in terms of beauty,、um, this is the second most popular purchase made on a weekly basis. And this story is definitely driven by Brazil.、Uh, Brazilians love their well-groomed、um, appearance, and this comes through in the data. Um, obviously, Brazil is just coming out of a, a, a crisis、um, at a national level, where consumers were cutting expenses. There were some、uh, surveys done of consumers、uh, some, by some government entities, and、uh, what consumers reported in terms of what are you cutting during this recession? The first thing that consumers cut were things like travel and food service. The last thing they cut it was beauty. Now we're talking more about that in purchase when they go to make that payment and take that good home or have it delivered to them. So third-party payment providers,、um, the likes of a PayPal, they came into existence to try to make the experience, that checkout experience, more seamless. It's about removing the friction from the experience. So in this question, what we discovered is that consumers. In Latin America, these savvy digital consumers—they do not use third-party payment apps like we see in other regions. So that's interesting because I think what it—I think there's a few learnings from this. But one thing that I wanted to highlight is if you think about the experience, the checkout experience. I, I know PayPal exists and is an option as a digital wallet here. But when you think about that experience and it, it comes up as an option for checkout, oftentimes the site. Kicks you somewhere else to go finish that checkout. Now that used to be in the case in the U.S. as well. Three to five years ago, that was the experience. But nowadays, if you were to check out in the U.S., you'll have the option of PayPal. You'll have Visa checkout, Mastercard, Masterpass,、um, other options like that.、Um, Apple Pay is even there as well. But the key difference is, is that with PayPal, for example, I would enter my email. My passcode or my password, and never leave that site. You just continue on with that experience where you started、uh, from that same website.、Uh, so I think that also speaks to the the site navigation issues.、Uh, we we still have somewhat of a cumbersome checkout experience here in Latin America. The opposite of why consumers shop online is why they still go in store. So I mentioned this briefly. Consumers still go in store to see and try on items. They also go in store for the immediacy of the purchase. 
Now, online and physical obviously should be complementary in some ways, um, but online can also help the physical environment, and the physical environment can help the online environment, right? They, they, there's some give and take there. And I think there's some learnings that to be had why consumers are not motivated to shop in store and what can we do with that online experience to better the overall commerce experience for the consumer. So one learning we can take away from here um, is better warranty. Could we provide that online instead? Maybe better selection, better product selection, more robust categories available online. This uh, second to last section, we're going to talk about some digital commerce opportunities, uh, five in particular that we'll walk through. As I've talked about a bit, Latin America is certainly still in the, age, the early stages of its digital commerce journey. And I think something that really indicates that is how consumers spend. Uh, so if you think about the categories that drive it, right now it's very much in the travel environment. The next thing that we often see as a region starts to shift digitally is they go to very high value product uh, categories. So consumer electronics, consumer appliances, things like that. So what we see is that Latin American consumers spent $9 billion in 2015 um, booking airline tickets directly from that airline. Uh, so that's the largest category. We are seeing some growth in some other areas. So uh, f online food service is a particularly promising category. With, uh, we expect growth over the next five years to expand or expand that market by about $5 billion. So I wanted to go back to this connectivity story because, again, this is so intertwined with digital commerce to give a sense of how the region might develop over the next five years. So if we go back to our digital consumer index, um, not only do we provide a current look at the environment, but Euromonitor has a lot of forecast data, uh, anywhere between five to 15 years. So we were able to leverage some of that to give us a five-year outlook. So you can see that Latin America, um, still the seven countries, do rank in the bottom half of this indices, or on both. Um, when you look at Latin America as a total region and their rank versus other regions on both the home connectivity and the mobile connectivity index indices in particular, they're actually going to fall to the bottom over the next five years. So though the region is making strides, there's quite a few hurdles to overcome to help move, move the overall region forward. And then this takes the digital consumer index. Um, it's charted there. And we charted it against consumer expenditure on a per capita basis. So what I wanted to do here was just give you a sense of the, the, the readiness of the region and then also the purse, the potential wallet of the region. So you can see, um, you know, what we see across the world is that Latin America it does not have, in terms of consumer expenditure, the growth rates of other emerging markets. Obviously, much of the region is uh, co uh, coming off of um, economic cooling. So we do expect that to rise in the coming years, but that's going to take some time to get consumption back to normal levels. And also, Latin Americans don't have the purse of developed markets. Uh, so that you can clearly see that um, the, the, the size of the bubble is a 2016 per capita for consumer expenditure. Um, so you can see the size of those against some of the bigger markets. Um, in the top right corner would be your kind of best bets. And those are markets like the UK and US, South Korea. So there are a number of challenges that lie ahead for, for digital commerce uptake across Latin America. I just highlighted the low consumer expenditure. We've talked a lot about the user experience. Uh, that seems like really a, a, a low-hanging fruit, um, something that could kind of easily be tackled um, and, and really something that, that you folks have control over and could improve upon. The third are fraud concerns. Obviously, consumers have some, some issues with going online, especially with mobile devices. Uh, so that's something that may take a while to uh, counteract, but uh, is something to keep in mind as we move forward. The fourth is the high cash usage. So cash is still the prominent payment method across Latin America. And we, we kind of have to accept that and look for ways to work around that. Um, so click and collect type services 
are, are one way or one possibility. Um, I know in Latin America, it's very, po uh, very po um, popular to be able to buy something online and then go somewhere and pay for cash in person at like a convenience store. So we see that happen quite a bit. Um, some research that we do in terms of how consumers buy online and where they pay, we do that research in Brazil and Mexico, and we see that 25% of those purchases made digitally are actually paid for offline. Um, so that's very high as compared with some other markets. Um, in the US, that figure you know, would be maybe 5%, something like that. And then lastly, we have delivery hurdles. Um, clearly, there are logistical challenges with getting these products to consumers. So in terms of the top categories where consumers are spending, uh, these are some of the, this is a look at 2015. Um, so the size of the box indicates how much consumers are spending. Uh, so we have very much driven by travel type categories with consumer electronics, a high value uh, product category coming in. This is where the growth is gonna come from. So over the next five years, what categories are expanding the most? I'll point out a couple things here. Online food service is obviously making some great strides. And then um, apparel and footwear, we see that ranked a little bit lower than globally. Uh, globally, on a product-based um, type purchase, apparel and footwear is the number one category driving this right now. Uh, but we're, see we're not seeing that in Latin America. And then this is a 2020 outlook. So what is going to, where are consumers going to be spending the, the vast majority of their money come 2020? You can see it's still driven very much by big ticket items. Now we're going to run through five digital commerce opportunities. Uh, so the number one being food service in Mexico. We see this market's going to triple in size over the next five years. Very much driven by that time-starved consumer. Uh, they have more options to be able to do these things. If you also think about it, um, ordering food service obviously is a, a lower price ticket item than maybe buying a TV. So consumers probably aren't as concerned with ordering this online. This platform is particularly interesting to look at. Um, so they have helped to bolster their position through a series of mergers and acquisitions, and we expect them to be opening the door and expanding into more cities in the future. The second opportunity would be consumer electronics in Brazil. Um, so in Brazil, what we've seen are you have these specialist retailers that are kind of reevaluating how they sell these items. And uh, declining categories such as digital cameras are being pushed online, and they're keeping the more profitable items that really move in store. So Brazil, we see leading this. They're going to have the fastest growth and also add um, the most absolute value as well over the coming five years. This casino group out of France is uh, particularly interesting in the Brazilian market. So they operate three different websites. Uh, this group sees three-fifths of its international revenue coming from this market. So obviously, it's of particular importance for them. Um, E-commerce, you can see in the, in the right here, it's very much outpacing what they see in a physical store. And when you think about Casino as a brand here in Brazil, um, and you think about them and their penetration across internet retail, which would be the purchase or how consumers purchase any type of good, they've uh, made quite a few strides with their market share, increasing it by 4% uh, over the last uh, five years. The third opportunity is uh, beauty in Brazil. So as I covered, the well-groomed experience is of particular importance to consumers here. And what we've seen in this story is a number of players hopping online. So you have Carrefour that, that um, launched some online services. You also have specialists doing so, and then also direct sellers. So I wanted to highlight this group. They saw their, their shares start to drop in the last few years. So as a result, they have tried to reduce their exposure to Brazil and also their exposure to direct selling in general. Uh, so they have acquired a brand, opened up a physical store, and also launched a consumer-facing online platform. 
The fourth opportunity is airline direct bookings in Colombia. So we think this is very much driven by technology coming more into this process and low cost airlines. So low cost airlines, they try to save money any way they can. One way they do that is to try to keep their listings off of online travel agencies so they can take the bookings themselves and make more money. So one, uh, one of the most popular on our airlines or low-cost carriers in Colombia would be this Viva Colombia. So they took the number one slot in 2013. And uh, I, I really enjoyed when I was reading about them because they really typify this low-cost mentality of uh, the bare bones. Uh, so they made news in July because they said, we're considering selling tickets where consumers would have to stand the entire flight. No worries, this is not going to happen. The Aviation Authority then uh, made news a few days later and said, no way are we going to ever give this the green light. The fifth opportunity is apparel and footwear in Argentina. Uh, so we see Argentina is going to post the, the fastest growth rate, and also in terms of absolute value, they're going to contribute about 60% of the region's overall expansion. Um, so in, within the apparel and footwear category, this is very much driven by sportswear. It has about a 5% penetration online. And I know many of you already know this, There's, it's very hard to go it without Mercado Libre here, and apparel and footwear specialists, um, or apparel and footwear brands have discovered that as well. Obviously, that platform has massive reach, so if you want to get in front of consumers, you have to be there. Mercado Libre accounted for one-fifth of all internet retail purchases made in this category in Argentina. Uh, for small retailers, Mercado Libre not only provides a platform for selling, but but they also have other services such as logistics and payments to help make that process easier for those, um, for those retailers. I know I've gone over a lot, so we're going to leave you with five key takeaways. So first and foremost, we are seeing consumers increasingly using the mobile for commerce activities. Why do consumers shop online? Um, here, it's all about personal recommendations and also loyalty schemes. Those are very important to these consumers. They uh, shop online to save time and money. What do they desire more from this experience? Easy navigation. Um, and then, of course, as I talked about, there, are, there is digital commerce potential here, but there are challenges to keep in mind uh, for future uptake. So I will turn it back to Gustavo. If, um, certainly, if anyone has questions or wishes to connect down the road, there's my contact information. <laughs> Thank you. So much for that. Thank you.